Welcome to the Science of Tree Felling series. In this video, we're going to be talking about liens. Why are liens important when it comes to tree felling and why must they be determined as a function of our plan has great implications. And this is because of gravity. Gravity is something that we can never avoid and when possible, we like to work with it. But when we have to work against it, we have to make sure that we are rightly prepared to overcome gravity so that the tree goes in the right direction. So what do I mean by liens and gravity? This is a concept that if a tree sitting on a pin is given the opportunity and we can perfectly balance it vertical, gravity will pull it straight down and the tree would never fall over if it's completely and perfectly balanced. That being said, I don't know of very many trees that are completely and perfectly balanced. So when you cut a tree, if you cut it clean through and there's nothing holding it in place, the tree will always fall in the direction that it leans. So if it has any lean in any which direction, it will always fall in that direction. So what can we do as Sawyers to work with or calculate and move against gravity? Uh, we'll talk about in upcoming videos how to create hinge wood that is going to hang on and hinge and uh, create a pivot location for the tree to move while still maintaining an attachment to the stump. But before we get to that point, looking at the liens based on our target is going to be our, our next step. So from our target, and we talked about in a previous video how to develop and design our target, uh, we want to walk out to our target spot. And from this spot is where we take our first lean measurement. So our lean measures are going to be, how does the tree look in relation to a plumb line? A plumb line is a perfectly vertical line as gravity would define it. What's, pr what's problematic with taking a look at a tree without thinking about a plumb line is the terrain and the topography can really mess with our ability to understand what is vertical and where is the tree leaning. So what do I mean by a plumb line? The simplest and cheapest way to make a plumbing device is simply having any type of lightweight string with a weight attached to it. With this, you can look at any object and it will pull down with gravity and create a perfectly vertical line, regardless of the topography of the gravity and wherever you are, whether you're on a hillside or a slope. Uh, so this will uh, objectify the lean of the tree uh, without your mind trying to warp it into something else. So that's a plumb line. So now with this concept of plumb line, maybe we aren't always carrying a plumb with us. While we're standing at our target, how do we get an idea of where the tree is leaning? And two leans are important a left-right lean, or how does it lean in relation to our target, and a front-back lean, how does it lean in relation uh, perpendicular or 90 degrees to our target. And our leans are always calculated based on our predetermined target location because the lean will change or our perception of the lean will change based on where we plan to fell it. So the lean here is going to be different than the lean here is going to be different than the lean here when calculated. So first lean we're gonna take is how much is the tree leaning right or left from our target? We know where our target is located, we can stand at our target, and we can take a look at the tree. Now the simplest way that we've come up with to be able to determine lean visually, uh, evergreens are a lot easier to perform this concept and uh, deciduous trees, um, excurrent trees are a little bit more difficult, but doable. And what we have to do is we have to decide visually where is the center of mass of that tree. What is center of mass? That's if everything is added up and calculated on both sides of the tree, where would the 
equal point be within that canopy uh, without doing complicated um, uh, mathematics and weighing every single branch and leaf on the tree we can simply take and frame the tree with our hands so we're going to take the tree and i'm going to from my target place my hand up and look at it and frame the leftmost branch with my left hand the rightmost branch with my right hand put my hands together in the very center and draw a straight line down now what it is that i'm visually pointing at on the ground in relation to the center of that stump is the offset of the lean one direction or the other and what are the implications of this if my tree is leaning one way or the other i have to offset my aim to my target so now think about this if my tree has a hard lean in this direction or even a slight lean in this direction and my target is straight ahead of me and i put a notch in this tree and, and aim at that target and say i want to hit this target when i drop that tree the hinge will keep this tree moving and attached to the stump until it's near horizontal and when it comes down the top of the tree is not going to hit my target the top of the tree or the center of the mass of the tree is going to be offset from that target based on the right left lean so if the tree is leaning this direction when I'm felling my tree to make sure that the top of this tree lands at my target as I'm aiming and developing my face notch, which we'll get to shortly, I need to offset that lean by aiming in the opposite direction of the lean based on my target so that when I aim it, it will land with the tip pointing on my target. Another thing that we're considering while we're working at our right left lean is depending on where that lean is, think about if anything goes wrong with that tree, again, gravity is going to determine where that tree goes. Let's say we made a miscalculation. Let's say the tree was hollow and we didn't realize it and as soon as we started cutting it, or the tree just decided to up and fail at that exact same time while we were standing next to it preparing to cut it. When a tree fails and it's no longer being dictated or controlled by an attachment to the stump, such as with a hinge, again, the tree will always fail in the direction that it leans and gets pulled down by gravity. So if a tree has a lean in one direction, that means it is more likely to fail, all things considered, in that direction every time. So as a sawyer, if I know that a tree has a right left lean and I know that I have to be at the base of that tree when I'm cutting it, if I have a preference and if I can avoid it when I am making my release cut or when I'm making my back cut, if I can position myself on what I'll refer to as the good side of the tree, which is the opposite side that the tree is leaning, that way when the tree begins to move or if anything goes wrong and the tree becomes disconnected from the stump i will be on the side less likely to get struck by the falling tree so there's a good side bad side consideration in that plan too now uh, you'll see in a future video some limitations to that but it's a consideration uh, certainly when we're talking about our retreat path um, is the retreat path more obscured or is there more difficulties on the good side that would prevent a good retreat path that may still be a consideration so um, it's not the end all be all uh, when we're talking about leans good side bad side but it is a consideration that should be thought about heavily during our plan now if we can't adjust for this again anytime that our our plan uh, is invalidated we must come up with a different plan or a different methodology to be able to remove that tree safely and we no longer proceed so uh, with lean we have our left right lean as a function of where our target is so from our target we're looking back and now we've calculated boxing in the tree drawing a plumb line or if we don't draw a plumb line maybe we get out our plumb bob here we stick it in the center of the tree and we see how that line draws and where it points on the ground in relation to the stump. 
now we know how much lean there is and how much is an important factor. So again, we have the video with how to determine your built-in measures and optically you can visualize how much lean there is. Is there five inches of lean? Is there five feet of lean? Is there seven feet of lean or is there more right left? The more severe the lean, the more consideration we have to give it. And we want to calculate that. So as we're looking at our target, our right left lean, if it's leaning five feet to the right uh, as I'm standing at my target, when I'm felling the tree, if I aim at my target, the top of the tree will land five feet to the left. So before I fell the tree, I'm going to aim at my target, offset my aim five feet to the right, and that way when I drop my tree, the top will come down and it, the top will land on my target where intended. So we have to consider the offset of the lean and understand a good side, bad side, where is the best place to stand uh, when we're releasing that tree, how much do we have to offset it. Now we have determined how much and in what direction the lean of the tree is from our target, right, left lean. The next consideration for lean is front back lean. Front back lean has to be taken uh, 90 degrees or perpendicular to our target. It can't be any more, any less, because again, remember, the lean is going to change based on where we are standing. So we want to look at it from 90 degrees. And where that is, um, you walk from your target back towards the tree, and then you go 90 degrees in either direction. Whichever direction is most open, whichever direction you can easily get to and see the canopy, that's where you want to go. So get to the tree, turn 90 degrees, walk as far out as you can so that you can easily see and frame in the canopy, and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to take our left hand and frame it the leftmost location of the canopy, right hand, frame it rightmost location of the canopy, bring our hands together and draw a plumb line straight down. What it is that we're pointing at in relation to the stump and the distance thereof is going to determine how much front lean or back lean that tree has. Again, if you don't trust your hands, you are always more than welcome to bring a cheap washer and a little bit of string out and frame that tree up the same way and drop that plumb line down. Now, what does this mean for us? This means now we can determine how much front lean or how much back lean the tree has. Again, gravity is always going to take the tree uh, in the direction of the lean. So if the tree in relation to our target is, has a front lean to it, that means that if I cut in from the back, this tree by the nature of gravity is going to begin to move towards our target. That in general is, is usually in our favor. However, there's a breaking point to this. If the tree has a heavy front lean, different cutting techniques must be considered. If you cut in straight from the back of a heavy leaning front tree, uh, a certain phenomena will happen which is called barber chairing. Barber chairing is a delamination of the wood fibers where the extremities of the compression and tension wood come together in a sheer plane. And as you cross that plane, the tree will split up the center and it will hinge further up in the canopy and come down violently. Uh, generally next to the stump where you're operating. A lot of good sawyers uh, become killed or injured as a function of barber chairing. And the main reason we see barber chair is because of heavy front leaning trees. So we'll talk about bore cutting in, a, in, a, in some of the next videos and how to attenuate some of that. Uh, so front leaning trees are in general good because we'll need less mechanical advantage. Gravity themselves uh, itself will take that tree in the direction that we want it to go in, uh, but always a consideration if there's a lot of front lean, and that is going to be a subjective measure uh, with a lot of time and experience and play based on species and other considerations. If it's a heavy front leaning tree, we have to know that there could be potential for barber chairing and, and make adjustments accordingly. Again, if it's got a heavy front lean and we can't make those adjustments necessary to attenuate a potential barber chair, the plan is invalid and we must not proceed. Now, conversely, and last thing I want to talk about in the function of leans before we get to mechanical advantage, 
is what if the tree has a heavy back lean? Again, I'm 90 degrees from my target. I'm looking at the canopy, and now I've seen that this tree has a heavy back lean. How do I decide what is heavy back lean? Again, I frame left, right, center, straight down, pointing at the base of the stump. I am far away from the base of that stump. That's a heavy back lean, or how much back lean? Now, this is where making sure that our ocular estimations of the distance from where we find our plumb line to the stump of that tree needs to be extremely accurate. So when we say how much back lean that we have or any type of lean, we want to quantify that with an actual measurement. It's got eight inches of black back lean. It's got one inch of back lean. It's got five feet of back lean or any fraction thereof know exactly how much back lean it has because if we cut the tree and it's got back lean, that tree will not start moving towards our target until we get the center of mass over the center of the stump, okay? So we have to overcome that back lean in some mechanical advantaged way to get the tree to start moving towards our target. All of the things considered, if it's got a back lean, it will never go towards the target until we tell it to. And that comes in the function of our next video, Mechanical Advantage. So with that, we have a lot of ways to move things forward. I won't ruin the surprise. And join us for our next video to talk about Mechanical Advantage, specifically how to overcome backleaning trees. Thanks for listening. Thank you for watching the Science of Tree Felling series. My hope is that you find these videos educational and that you learn to be a better, safer tree feller. If you know others who may benefit from this series, share the link, like the video, and subscribe to this channel. Keep watching for even more tree felling knowledge. See you next time.